There are a few things that we always want our mix to be. Balance, glued, Actually, I'm gonna wait for the grand reveal. Those are a couple of the most important elements when it comes to any mix, but by far the things we struggle with the most. This led me to the place of doing a mini series on everything I thought was most key in having a grade A mix. So what are the simplest ways for us to achieve each of these things? Well, don't you fret my friends, because by the end of this video, you'll have an understanding of what each of these five things are and how to recognize them. So what's happening fam? Miami here with JST and I feel like I've honed in on what the most important elements of a mix are. But I realized that being able to recognize them is the most important key. Once you see something, it's a lot easier to recreate it. Really hard to try and recreate something you aren't aware of or you don't understand. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about recognizing elements of a mix and then each of these are going to get their own specific episode so I can show you how to achieve it. Makes sense, right? I might even show a quick way to achieve it and do the longer proper way of achieving it in the following series episode. We're kind of going to play this one by ear. So first things first, the most important element of mixing balance. When you think of the word mixing, it doesn't really have much to do with shining tricks that we learn in mixing, you know, parallel compression, side chaining, top down mixing, whatever. What it does correlate to is balance. If you were mixing ingredients together that you found online, you'll have to pay pretty specific attention to what the amounts needed for each of those ingredients are in the recipe. If you put 10 tablespoons of flour instead of 10 teaspoons, it's most likely going to destroy the overall meal. Take this analogy and relate it to a mix. Too much of something can ruin a mix and too little can make it too boring or bland. But here I'm specifically talking about an unbalanced mix. Do you remember those pictures we used to get in school that would have have differences in them that you had to find, let's apply that to this lesson. Take a listen to an unbalanced mix and I want you to take a second to pinpoint all the things that you think are wrong with it. After that, I'm going to explain what's actually wrong with it and we'll do the same thing again but change a couple of elements. Sounds like fun, right? All right, let's go. So first of all, cool song, right? But what was wrong with that mix? If you said the snare was too loud, the vocals were too low and the bass was lacking on subs, you would have been right. And that's not the only thing that's lacking on subs right now. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell to be notified when we upload new content. But this game is fun, so let's play one more time. Now we're standing at the front porch, screaming at the front door, lies to yourself, always slept through the floorboards. I was the match that led your What was wrong with it this time? If you said the guitars were too low and the bass subs were overwhelming, you'd be right. And if you're wondering what I'm looking at is to see if my subs are overwhelming right now, after you click that little red box, transition game leveled up. But now that we've seen this the wrong way, let's show what this mix sounds like when it's actually balanced. Now we're standing on the front porch, screaming at the front door, lies to yourself, always slept through the floorboards. I was a match that led your torch. See the difference there? And in the balance episode, I'll be breaking down how to find balance perfect every time. Okay, so that's it the format for how we're gonna do this. Talk about it, show an example of it being done wrong versus being done right. Okay, we get it. On to our next issue, with. With is one of those things we're always chasing for, except when it comes to my body. I don't know if you guys noticed, your boy lost like 40 pounds since I started doing videos. You know, when you really think about mixing, it seems like there are endless options and possibilities. And that may be, but it's kind of a million things trying to help you get to a similar result at the end. You're trying to get your source material to have its own identity and space. And with helps to create separation from that mono center to contribute to that. So let's take a listen to that same mix again, but we're gonna do a back and forth from the main mix and change a couple elements in the spatial realm. Take a second and try to pick out what's changing. Let's go. Now we're standing on the front porch, screaming at the front door, lies to yourself, always slept through the floorboards. I was the match that led your torch. I was the match that led your torch. So what's changing from A to B? If you said the vocals and guitars, you'd be correct. Let's show the vocals by themselves now, quickly. Now we're standing at the front porch, screaming at the front door, lies to yourself, always slept through the floorboards. I was the match that led your torch. I was the match that led your torch. 
If you're curious what's happening and like what you're hearing, I'm using the with module from Howard Benson Vocals and you should head to the description below to download your free trial today. In the full episode of this, I'll be showing all the most powerful ways to make your mix as wide as humanly possible. And the ball keeps rolling, so what's up next? Automation. Man, oh man, automation. This is one of those things I always know. It's a video I should do an episode on, but I know it's gonna be really hard to do it properly without having people complain about my approach or anything, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Automation is extremely important because of one of the key things that keeps our attention in a situation, dynamics. Being dynamic isn't just important in mixing. It's important in the video you're watching right now. If I sat here and talked like this for an entire episode, I. Wouldn't really be good at doing my job now, would I? And the same goes for a song and the elements within it. Like when you're using drum MIDI with no humanization or have stereo keyboard playing. So automation acts in the same regard. Let's listen to a transition with no automation going into the chorus versus one with automation going into the chorus really quickly. Notice how much energy and excitement that brings to the mix to keep you involved, interested, and still listening. There are a million things you can do with automation to keep the listener intrigued, and I'm really excited to show you guys this in the series. I'm also more worried about how this episode will turn out than any of the rest of them, but we're gonna see what happens. It's been requested a lot, and I owe that to you guys, so. On to the next important element of mixing, glue. What is that? You know, we hear that word all the time, but what does it even mean? When we hear the term glue in the mixing world, it typically means taking all the elements of a subgroup and making them sound like one cohesive piece of audio. Think drum buses or vocal buses, finding a way to have them work together as a unit, and this is typically done with compression. So let me take all the bus compression on this mix off and I'll replace it with one of the bus glue series we have at JST to kind of show the difference between an unglued mix and a glued one. Notice how much more put together that mix sounded just by adding a single plugin at the end of each channel. And if you're a fan of how that sounded, link is also in the description below for the bundle of those bus glues. Great plugins if I do say so myself. In the full video of gluing your buses, I'll be explaining the types of compression to use on them and breaking down what different types will do, etc, etc. So stay tuned for that. And the next important element of mixing, well, one could argue this gets into mastering territory, but I still do it in the mixing phase. It's gotta be loud enough, man. You know, we gotta make it slap. Have you ever gotten into a situation where you're sending off a mix, but then notice it seems lackluster just by the sheer volume of it alone? This is one of the big issues with bedroom producers, but it doesn't have to be. There are tons of tools out there to help you getting your mix loud enough that when you compare it to others, it's at least at a volume level that it doesn't seem inferior. I don't feel I need to show this example, but I'll say by the time this video comes out, pretty sure JST will have dropped a new plugin to help with that issue. And if it seems like I'm hinting at something in the mastering realm, well, you wouldn't be wrong. A lot of surprises on the way, so when I think of this episode, I'm not sure if it's gonna be more about just making your mix competitive in general or understanding what you should strive for with levels. Let me know in the comments so I make the right video for you guys. So we went over balance, width, glue, automation, and loudness. If you ask me, these are the most important elements once you've gotten your source material sounding good and EQ'd properly. Do you feel excited for this upcoming series? Is there anything you feel I left out? Leave it in the comments below and I will chat with you fine people like I always do. If you're an engineer on the come up, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, you only have to do it one time, and tap that bell for notifications so when a video drops, you know the location. Till next time, I am out of here. Mic drop, except as engineers we know, I'd never really drop this thing, cause that'd get really expensive, even if it is a piece of shirt. <laughs>